Have you ever wondered why some believers' prayers get answered quickly, while others seem to go unheard? The reason this happens is because many children of God don't know how to talk to God properly. In other words, they don't know how to present their cases before God in a way that gives Him a good enough reason to grant them what they are asking for. Let me explain. You see, what most Christians fail to realize is the fact that the spiritual realm is very legalistic by nature. That means the spiritual realm operates very much like a courtroom, and when you approach God in prayer, you are coming before the judge of all the earth to present your cases. And how you present your case before God will determine the outcome. When Jesus died on the cross, he gave us direct access to God's throne of grace. We can now enter boldly and present our cases. But the problem is, most Christians don't know how to argue their case properly before God. They offer up weak prayers that often go unanswered. So sometimes you might find a believer who has a very important need go into God's presence, but presents their case in a very weak manner, which makes them not get what they want. For example, let's say two people are sick, and they go up to pray because they both want healing. The first person prays by saying, God, I feel sick, heal me, and they end there. The second person prays by saying, Lord Jesus, sickness is trying to attach itself to my body. But your word tells me, in Exodus chapter 15, verse 26, that you are Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals me. It is also written in your word, in Jeremiah 30, verse 17, that you will restore health to me. In Isaiah chapter 53, verse 5, you also confirmed that by Jesus' stripes I am already healed. You also mentioned in Psalm 103, verses 2 to 3, that you forgave my sins and healed all my diseases. In Matthew chapter 8, verse 17, you promised me that you took away my infirmities and bore my sicknesses. You also promised me in 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24, that by your wounds I am healed. Lord, I present back your word to you as evidence that you desire me to walk in divine health. I reject this sickness and disease right now because, according to Mark chapter 16, you have given me power over sickness. I do not want to die because it is written in Psalm 118 verse 17 that I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. And Romans chapter 1 verse 17 tells me the just shall live by faith. By faith I stand on your word and declare total healing in my body in Jesus' mighty name. Now here's the truth. Between the first person and the second person, the second person's prayer has way more power and weight than that of the first person. And the reason is simple. The second person's prayer is backed up with scriptures. It is not about the length of their words, it's about the quality. The second person's prayer will be much more pleasing to God because they are arguing their case based on what is written and not just based on emotions. As simple as it is, the statement, it is written, is very powerful. Not even Satan can stop it. The moment you mention what is written, everything bows down. Notice that every time Jesus said what was written, the devil always changed the topic, because even the devil knows that the word of God is extremely powerful. Many years ago, before my grandfather passed away, he always kept saying that he would not die before the age of 100. This didn't make sense to us, because we knew that only God had the final say in how long a man would live. In fact, my grandfather told us several times jokingly over the years that if we heard he had passed away before the age of 100, we shouldn't take the news seriously. We always laughed, but as I watched him closely, I discovered that his secret was in his belief system, in prayers and the word of God. Sometimes my dad and I would search for him all over the place, only to find him secretly praying. And his prayers were often filled with petitions and scriptures. He always loved declaring reasons to God why he needed more time to live. He always loved quoting Psalm 118, verse 17, saying he still had so much to do for God, and shall not die before 100, but shall live to declare the works of God. In fact, there were several times that my father and I would come to his room and find him sleeping, and my dad would think he was gone, only for my grandfather to wake up and say to my dad, What's your problem? He told us he still had a lot of people he wanted to take care of, and so he needed more time to accomplish his purpose. He kept to his promises, and amazingly, exactly a day after his hundredth birthday, he slept peacefully. This was powerful. 
This was because he understood the power of petition and gave God a good enough reason to keep him alive. He understood that if you hold God to his word and give him a good enough reason to grant you what you want, God will honor his word above his name and that is why he was able to live that long. The word of God is your evidence. As long as you present what is written confidently and give God good reasons why you want what you want, God cannot back down on his word. The reminder to God of his word, not because he has forgotten, it is because when you become born again, you become co-heir with Jesus. This means you have the same right as Jesus to stand before God and ask God what you want. Praying this way is so effective because it essentially backs up your requests with God's own word. What you are essentially doing is taking biblical promises and using them as proof that God should grant what you are asking for. Just as an earthly courtroom operates by set laws, so does the throne room of heaven. God has established spiritual laws, and his judgments are always according to his word. Psalm 138 verse 2 says, God honors his word above his name. This means God can never back down on his promises of what he has written. Just like evidence presented before a court, present your evidence confidently like a lawyer. Don't beat around the bush or weakly beg God for help. Boldly state your case. Remind God of scriptures and promises that support your arguments. The Bible tells us to come boldly before the throne of grace to find mercy and grace to help in time of need. So present your need, argue your case from the word, then ask God to grant your request based on his promises. Job chapter 23 verse 4 says, I would order my cause before him and fill my mouth with arguments. Notice that Job said he would fill his mouth with arguments. This is what you have to do too. Confidence is key when presenting your case before God. The book of Hebrews chapter 10 verse 19 says, Having therefore, brethren, boldness to enter into the holiest by the blood of Jesus. This verse encourages us to approach God with boldness and confidence because of the sacrifice of Jesus. When you stand before God, you must speak with the assurance that He hears you and will act according to His word. As I said earlier, the spiritual realm operates legally. When we approach God in prayer, we are presenting a case before a judge. God, the righteous judge, hears our case and makes a determination based on His word. As believers, we have access to present our cases directly to God because of the finished work of Jesus Christ. You have to argue your case before God and give Him solid reasons standing on His own words. Say things like, Lord, you promised in your word that no weapon formed against me shall prosper. Heavenly Father, your word says that you supply all my needs according to your riches in glory, so I boldly ask you to provide for this need I'm presenting before you today. Father, your word says that by your stripes I am healed, so I declare total healing in my body now. Sickness has no legal right to operate in me, for you sent your word and healed me. Because the Bible tells us God is not a liar, that means if you remind him of what he said, he can never deny it, and he will do it. The Bible says in Second Timothy that if we are faithless, he remains faithful, because he cannot deny himself. The Bible tells us in Isaiah chapter 55 verse 11, So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth. It shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. God exalts his word even above his name. He is obligated to honor what he has spoken. As we present our cases before him, we must argue using his spoken word to strengthen our positions. This enables us to hold God to his word as we pray, just as a good lawyer uses the law to argue cases. For us, the word is the law we use to argue before God. And the truth is, God actually loves people who present their cases with facts using scriptures. He loves it, because first it tells him you know what you are saying. Secondly, it tells him you trust him. And thirdly, it shows him that you are diligent enough to study his word and his will. In the book of Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18 it is written, Come now and let us reason together, saith the Lord. God is your father, which means you can speak to him in the language of a son or the language of a daughter. But there are certain issues or occasions you might have in which you will have to speak to him as a judge. And the way you speak to him on this occasion is to speak to him based on what he said. To argue your case effectively before God, 
you must know his word. Supplication or petition is a form of prayer where you earnestly and humbly ask God for something. The first thing you have to do is identify the promise. Find scriptures that relate to your situation. The Bible is full of promises covering every aspect of life. The second thing you have to do is prepare your case. Like a lawyer prepares for court, gather your scriptures and understand them deeply. Present with confidence, approach God boldly, making sure what you are requesting aligns to his will because 1 John chapter 5 verse 15 says, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hear us whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of him. As long as your cases align with what he has already said in his word, you can present them boldly knowing he will confirm it. No devil in hell can prevent God from performing what he has already promised. Finally, stand firm. Maintain your faith and confidence that God will fulfill his word. Hebrews chapter 10 verse 35 says, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. This is how people in the Bible prayed. In the book of Isaiah chapter 38, King Hezekiah was told he would die. He prayed to God, reminding him of his faithfulness and asking for more years. God granted his request, adding fifteen years to his life. It says, Then Hezekiah turned his face toward the wall, and prayed unto the Lord, and said, Remember now, O Lord, I beseech thee, how I have walked before thee in truth and with a perfect heart, and have done that which is good in thy sight. And Hezekiah wept sore. Then came the word of the Lord to Isaiah, saying, Go, and say to Hezekiah, Thus saith the Lord the God of David thy father, I have heard thy prayer, I have seen thy tears. Behold, I will add unto thy days fifteen years. In Exodus chapter 32, verses 11 to 14, the Bible says after the Israelites made a golden calf and worshipped it, God was ready to destroy them. Moses, however, pleaded with God to spare them, appealing to his promises to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and his reputation among the nations. In verse 13, Moses specifically said, Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel thy servants, to whom thou swearest by thine own self, and saidst unto them, I will multiply your seed as the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have spoken of will I give unto your seed, and they shall inherit it forever. Exodus chapter 32 verse 14 then said, And the Lord repented of the evil which he thought to do unto his people, I hope this teaching has given you a better idea on how to talk to God. Thank you for watching. If you love our video, please feel free to subscribe to our YouTube channel.